Yeah, you're really going to sight out your landing spot and then use your peripheral. you got to see the same amount of runway on both sides of the plane. Right. Because you can't see over the, over the front. Yeah, I couldn't see where the hell I was. Yeah. Learning how to land when you can't see where you're going. So this literally flew like a dream. Like, I mean, you know you have the flying dreams? This is the flying dream. You feel the air, you smell the engine. It's visceral. You feel it, it's, you're a part of it. The airplane is so gentle when you're flying straight and level. And then you want to yank and bank it. Yeah, you can decide to be heavy on the controls and then pull some Gs instantly. All right. So yeah, it goes from being gentle and light on the controls to firm and aerobatic. It's unbelievable. Magic. All right, you have control. I have control. This was a primary trainer. You came here with zero skills and an instructor would sit in the back seat, fly with you in the front seat. Once you became proficient in the front, then he would put you into the back. This was the Cessna 152 of the day. Usually soloed between eight and 10 hours, and then you were cut loose after about 30 or 40 hours. We had a beautiful day to meet this amazingly pristine 1942 Boeing Stearman that Dennis spent three years restoring and rebuilding. The insurance company went, what? <laughs> so yeah, I'm trying to insure Boeing. He told me the story about how his hand cramped up on the first test flight. After unclenching or relaxing my hand enough and just enjoying the experience, I thought, wow, you know, I can't believe it, I'm actually up in this thing. But then, of course, the tough part comes, which is bringing it back in for a landing, which uh, actually went quite well, uh, considering that I had to do it on pavement, which is where it could get a little scary. I had good conditions, and I wouldn't want to have tackled it in some of the crosswinds that I'm comfortable in in something like a Super Cup. So like I said, you have to pick your battles, but I think the bad reputation uh, isn't really deserved. It's a, it's a strong airplane, it's top heavy, it's got a narrow gear, and, a, and if you divert your attention and there's a crosswind, uh, you will get into trouble with it. So I notice you're working the trim a lot, eh? Is that where you're mostly, you're juggling between throttle and trim? Yeah. As it would be in any airplane, because otherwise you're fighting it. Yeah. So where do you keep your left hand naturally? Just sitting on the throttle? Yeah. And then a cannon down the trim, back up the throttle? Right. Yeah. And because it is top heavy, and typically uh, somebody who's panicking will jump on the brakes or something, sure, you're going to ground loop it or flip it over on his nose, and I've seen it done, so I, I can imagine it's not very hard to do. So the purpose of, uh, of making them hard to fly was to adequately prepare the, the pilots for the even harder things that they would have to fly eventually once they went into service. And I, and I wanted to fly it because it had this bad rap and, and in reality it doesn't. And they're just curving around the corner of the escarpment here. Yeah, this is, this is awesome, like being low and slow over the country in a biplane. It does get better than that. This is part two of my Stearman training series, focusing on grass landing. See the description for links to other episodes and more Warbird flying videos. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna put you up at a fairly high angle so that your descent that you can see over the nose of it. And then I'll give you instruction on leveling it out, all right? Affirmative. So you have control. I have control. Just hold it level, don't dive from the field yet. I'm gonna trim it back so that it's lower. And now I'll push the nose down. Not too much, gently, yeah. There's definitely a lot of seagulls out today, eh? You see that yeah. one? Yeah. They enjoy the thermals. Yeah. I feel a little fast here. Oh, don't worry. Once I pull the power off, this thing comes out of the sky like oh, a refrigerator. Yeah. I feel it breaking now. All right, yeah. so nose down. And trim as required. Trim it to neutral. Yeah, so where about there? Yep. Hold it there. I feel like okay. we're sinking. I feel like right we're... rudder. Nose up a bit. Nose up a bit. There you oh, go. Oh, shit. That landed sooner than I expected. Wow. Rudder, rudder, rudder. Dead to death. Dead, dead, dead. How am I doing? I can't, I can't see anything, but. It's fine. You didn't hit your camera, man. That's all that matters. But did I do that? How much were you helping? Nothing. Didn't do a damn thing. Yeah, it landed sooner than I thought. Well, you're sitting, uh, you know, you got a pretty long gear, right? We stopped and repositioned the cameras to get the over-the-shoulder shot for a better forward view for the rest of the landing training. So let's bring the power all the way back. This thing sinks really quickly, so speed is important. Right. If it gets slow, it'll start to sink. 
If you're trying to rest the sink by bringing the nose up, it's just going to sink even more. So, so most people tend to start it by coming in a bit high and then pushing the nose down so they can see. So that's what I suggest to you. Turn final here. Yeah. And then pull the power right back to idle. I'll put the mixture in. And just hold this attitude for now. Don't uh, bring the nose up at all. Okay. Take yourself over the runway. Lower the nose a bit. There you go. I just hold it until I want to round out. Yep. Then start rounding out. Hold it off. Oh, too high. Hold it off. Oh, she's gonna bounce. Wow. That's all right. All right, that was good. Yeah, I, I knew I was gonna drop it on, but we just went with it. Oh, uh, it, it'll take a lot worse pounding than that. We did a bunch of touch and goes, and I started to get the hang of it. Okay, power back to climb. Right about there, that's good. Just think about rounding it out a little bit more gradually. The trick is don't don't pull it up so abruptly because it, that creates a lot of drag and that slows you down and that's not a good thing to be when you're still 20 feet off the ground. Yeah, yeah. I expected it to sink more and it didn't. Well, that was partially by mistake. We didn't have the power all the way to idle. Okay. There you go. Bring it back a bit more. A bit more. A bit more, get the nose down. Beautiful. This is a nice profile here. Keep the nose down for a while. Keep working on lining up on the runway. Turn in a bit earlier because you overshot last time. Yeah, I did, yeah. Bring the power back a bit more. Keep the nose down. Each time you chop the power, just nudge the nose down a little more. Because it's very draggy. you got to make up that loss of energy somehow. Right. Okay, bring the power back. Back. Power back. Power back. All the way back. All the way back. Yep. Hold it off. Hold it off. Oh, yeah. Ah, uh, it's a wheelie. That's fine. Hey, never. Yeah, so you touch down on the veins while you're still tail up in the air. Yeah. So just remember where that was and just keep holding it off, right? Yeah. Stretch it out a bit more. All right, let's uh, turn a bit now and start metering back the power a bit. Well, that was seagull was close. You know? That was one close seagull. I was. I didn't even see him until he was right there. The only thing I worry about with this is the bird hitting that uh, fuel site glass there. Right. It'll take it out and then you'll be drinking gasoline. Yeah, that'd be horrible. Okay, power back. All the way back. There, yeah, there you go. Okay, get the nose down. I feel, like we're, I feel like we're really stinking. Yeah, it's all right. All right, that was a wheel landing. That's not too, too bad. Yeah, I couldn't see where the hell I was. Yeah. So I should have had a bit higher nose up. Well. If you're landing, if you're wheel landing and, you're, and that's your intention, that's fine. Yeah, I don't really know what my intention was. I was just trying not to hit hard and bring it in with a minimal amount of stay. Yeah, at that point, I mean, there are there are steerman pilots where if you ask them if they do wheel landings or three pointers, they say, I don't know. I figure it out at the last second. I think that's what I did there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you really got to sight out your landing spot and then use your peripheral. You got to see the same amount of runway on both sides of the plane. Right. Because you can't see over the over the front. Nope. And if you start craning your neck, then you inevitably go that direction. So, so don't stretch your neck trying to see. It's futile. There's nothing to see. Right. Follow the peripheral vision and it's just a certain amount of feel. Okay. Power's going back? Yep. We'd flown this circuit without any speaking. It was really cool to do it without coaching and have it work out. Very nice. Yeah, that felt really good. I was in the zone on that one.
We went around to do one more, and then did a full stop so we could say goodbye to the ground crew, who were going to be driving home. We could land and, and just taxi up to them and say we're on our way, or okay. All right. up to you. Yeah. yeah, because I actually want to do a full stop and feel it. Alright, so then try to keep holding it off and let it free point. Okay. Take advantage of the whole field, and with, with that in mind, you don't have to worry about landing any time specifically, you know what I mean? Yep. Just take your time. Just get the nose up a bit, because you are coming in a bit fast. Okay. Alright? And that also makes the airplane a little bit frantic, and that's why it bobbles around so much. You notice once you slow down, it, it has nicer manners. Yep. You bring the power back. Energy, energy, energy. That's about right there? Yep. To the right a bit more. Right a bit more, there you go, power all the way back. Hold it off, hold it off, hold it off, there you go. So this is just the start. Stay tuned for a lot more Warbird action. We're able to put out a new video every second Friday thanks to the supporters on Patreon and the sponsors. We're also running monthly contests, so please check out flightchops.com for info and how you can play. And keep your flight chops sharp. Once that uh, fuel level indicator is bouncing below that bottom line. Are you in trouble? No. Okay. Time to go home. Yeah, alright, cool.